In 2012, the National Academy of Sciences published a report recommending significant changes to how the nation's complex, contaminated groundwater sites were being cleaned up. Recognizing that reaching drinking water standards would ultimately be unattainable, as well as extremely expensive at many sites, the NAS advised a transition to long-term management, including attenuation-based remedies. At the Department of Energy's Savannah River site in South Carolina, an innovative enhanced attenuation remedy is now being implemented by DOE's Office of Environmental Management with the help of the Savannah River National Laboratory, SRS Environmental Compliance and Area Completion Projects, and their partners. Historically, the SRS produced plutonium for national defense purposes. Regulations at that time permitted discharges into seepage basins. As a result, the groundwater below the F basin threatened local waterways with highly acidic, low-level radioactive tritium, uranium, strontium-90, and iodine-129 liquid contamination. In 1997, they began a pump and treat operation. They would remove the groundwater, pump it up to a treatment unit. The treatment unit then would remove most of the contamination. What was left was primarily tritium, and the idea was to then capture that tritium in kind of a continuous loop where it would be injected up gradient of the basins, flow down to the extraction wells, be extracted again until the tritium decayed to a point where they could shut the system off. And these pump and treat systems were very expensive to operate and they were not very effective. Within about four, four years or so, we could begin to see that the plume was bypassing the extraction system. And so we recognized that we needed to do something else. We would never meet the actual cleanup requirements using pump and treat. So we needed to look at a more effective way. So coming up with a new innovative approach with this passive cleanup, looking at what is realistic for the end state of what we need to clean up to seem to be more effective. The innovative remediation approach, known as enhanced attenuation, adapted and harnessed the site's natural hydrologic and geologic features. Enhanced attenuation adds human intervention to boost the natural cleansing capacity of the subsurface to degrade contaminants over time. So in this case, you had a very controlling geology. The structural contours in that clay layer beneath the aquifer was controlling the flow of contaminants. So why not use that in a remediation? Why not exploit that to the benefit of cleaning up the site? So we created a funnel and gate system. We engineered the flow of the water such that the water that was always recharging to the system had a path of release, and then the water at depth, which was more contaminated, would be held back. After the funnel and gate system was installed, an alkaline-based solution was injected at the gates, effectively stabilizing the metals in a local treatment zone. And what that does is helps certain contaminants, like uranium and strontium-90, to sorb much more strongly to the soils, so slows down their movement to the stream. And meanwhile, the tritium gets slowed down by the wall itself and has a much longer flow path, so it gets diluted by mixing, but also by decay. So it was a very unique and creative solution. To optimize the strategy, DOE's Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory took 30 years of F-Basin monitoring data and created 3D simulations of the plume's past, present, and future. This model will be very useful to inform regulators and also stakeholders to evaluate how effective the engineering treatments are. The main contaminant at this site is uranium, 
which is known to have very complex geochemistry. By coupling running reaction network and groundwater flow model, we can predict the future concentration of uranium at this site and also we can evaluate the effectiveness of remediation strategies and also long-term monitoring strategy at this site. SRNL's pioneering research continues at F-Basin, including the injection of humate to aid in the remediation of metals and radionuclides and silver chloride particles to remediate iodine-129. And it builds off the old axiom, you can't fight Mother Nature. So it just makes sense to take the forces that nature gives us and exploit those to use in the cleanup. Mother Nature also seems to favor the bottom line. The enhanced attenuation reduced costs by 90% from $1 million a month to $1 million a year. So it's a tremendous cost savings, not only at Savannah River, but across the other sites across the DOE complex. 